like to welcome y'all out to Hunter's Chapel today. Today is Youth Sunday. We have um, several things uh, to do this morning. We ask that you um, support these kids because they've worked hard. We love our kids here. Without kids, you don't got no future. So uh, we're going to start with page 306. Aren't y'all just happy to be at church today? Amen. Amen. So we're going to get right to announcements. Uh, today's Youth Sunday, of course. We have the fellowship lunch back there. And then on March 15th, we have the singing night. A special guest will be Bama Blue Grace. And then on the March 16th is the y'all lunch at noon. Peggy Wade will be the speaker. Menu is Italian. Let Lavonna know what you're bringing. Uh, will three men come forward to take the offering? Birthdays, birthdays. Oh. Is there any birthdays or anniversaries? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Now will three men come forward to take up the offering? Thank <laughs> you. 
page 333. Will Brother Sam please bless the Lord?
Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the people that are in this room. Give us courage and strength to do the things that Heavenly Father has called us to do. Pray, Lord, this day for the young people. You know, Lord, that if we don't teach them and train them in your ways, then we're not doing what you've instructed us to do, dear Heavenly Father. Let us as Christians to look out for them and love them and to guide them, dear Heavenly Father, in your path, dear Heavenly Father. The world out there wants to guide them in another way, dear Heavenly Father. But help us to teach them and to love them, dear Heavenly Father, and teach them in your path the way that they ought to go, dear Heavenly Father. We pray this day, Lord, for the land in which how evil it is. Oh, Lord, our third school lesson this morning was talking about time in Habakkuk's time and how evil the world was. There's always been evil in this world, but, Lord, we thank you for always being with your people. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, this day for the sick and those in prison. You know each and every one of us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to love them and to pray for them. And, Lord, to train them and to lay them in your path, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to always love each other and to Oh, Lord, we just seek you this day. Give us the knowledge of your word and fill our hearts with it. And we be full of it. Cover them with that salt and that fire that comes from heaven. Oh, no, Lord, it's you. And we're special to you. Help our worship to be one of you. We love you. We got a lot of littles and we got a lot going on, so we are not perfect, but we want them to be involved. Who, 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 who
Without a shield, without a sword. Hey, who? Fed up with the giant's voice. Hey, who? Screaming curses to the Lord. Hey, who? Now I walk down the hill alone. Hey, who? With a pocket full of river stones. Hey, who? But what the Philistine couldn't see is what I had was more than me. See, on my own, I'm weak, but my good fights for me. Well, I was serving to the king, interpreting his crazy dreams. I won't worship mortal men So they threw me in the lion's den Vicious teeth were all I saw Till something came and shut their jaws You couldn't find a scratch on me In fact, that night, I fell asleep When morning came, it shocked them all Cause my God fights for me I stumbled into the room with alabaster and my wound. I could feel their judging eyes as I knelt before the cross. I poured my oil upon his feet. I didn't care who saw me weep. I gave him all I had that day, and he should have sent me on my way. But instead, he lifted up. Sorry here today. Hey, what's the giant in your way? Hey, are you trapped in? Can't get out. Or are you staring down a lion's mouth? Can you stay before the Lord? Or do you need to hit the floor? Cause it don't matter what you've done. <laughs> Cause the battle is already won.
Savior 
Let's give all these kids another big round of applause. You know, they've done a wonderful job this morning. And, uh, you know, you don't really know how much pressure it is to get up here as a young child as you, unless you've done it before. I was always asking you Sundays to teach the adult class. And, you know, so that was a lot of pressure. But it, it takes great courage. It takes confidence. But number one, it takes believing in Jesus Christ and allowing him to guide you to do the things that you do. You know, it don't matter what age you are. You know, everybody's got a position in God's house. Everybody's got a purpose for being here this morning, or you wouldn't be here to begin with. You know, and it's all about, when it comes right down to it, it's about salvation. You know, it's about teaching the little ones what they got to do to reach that point when they reach that age of accountability, to know what's got to happen to be able to go to heaven someday. And it's about us as the adults of of leading by the example that Jesus Christ left us, that we would lead for our children also to let them know what's got to be done to go to heaven one day. You know, and I, I've been blessed. I could go home right now and, and say I've been blessed, had a good time in the house of the Lord. Sitting there this morning, we were just about ready to go, and I told Cynthia, I said, I had the baby. I said, you need to hand me my Bible. She said, why? I said, because the Lord's done changed direction on me. I said, I just need to mark the scripture real quick before we go. And, you know, and I got to thinking about, and I was praying for our youth while I was holding that baby and thinking about, you know, how, how precious they are to the church. And, stuff. And, and he led me into Matthew chapter 18, and most of you are going to know exactly where this is going. But we wonder and we think, you know, Kids, you think, just how important am I to church? Just how important am I to Jesus? Very important. Very important. I want you to listen to the scriptures this morning. You know, and this is uh, Jesus talking right here also. In Matthew chapter 18, the first verse says, And at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of the offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom that offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into the life halt or maim rather than having two hands and two feet and be cast in everlasting fire. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, that in heaven their angels do also behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, I just want to thank you, Lord, for the children here. I want to thank you for their participation, for their courage, Lord. Lord, I just ask your blessings upon each and every one of us here today, Lord. I pray that we would open our hearts and our minds this morning, Lord, to the message that you've given us here, Lord, and just help us, Lord, to spread it out in this old sin, sick, and dying world that we live in each and every day. Help us, Lord, to let your light shine out through us in every place that we go. We ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as we you think about it, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. Mamas and daddies that's got little ones, you know, we got grandbabies and they're loud, they're moving and moving around and stuff. But I promise you, they're paying a whole lot more attention than you ever think they will. Because, you know, I used to uh, kind of torment my daughters because they were preacher's kids, you know. I'd ask them what was the message about them. Boy, they just, you know, they just get all tense, afraid they would mess up. But then they got kind of smart on me. They'd say, I'd say, well, what was the message about? And they'd say, God. And I said, no, no. That's a shortcut. All right? Then tell me where it was at, you know, where was the message from? They'd say the Bible. So they're smart. 
They're smart. They're thinking. They're already thinking ahead of what is going to be happening in the future, you know, especially when it comes to mom and dad and, and grandma and grandpa. But, we, you know, we need to have them that sharp of the knowledge of the devil and the things of this world out there. We need to have them to be aware of the, the wiles and the trickery and the things that the devil is going to uh, try to trick them with each and every day, not only as children but us. As God's children, the adults that's here this morning, we also need to be aware of these things that the devil uses against us. How do we know that? Right here. Everything you need to know is right here. We need to understand it. We need to read it. We need to seek his faith. You know, and people say, well, I can't understand the Bible. Well, you need to pray for it. You need to ask the Lord to open it up to you. Show me what it is that I'm about to read, Lord. Let me understand everything that, uh, uh, that I'm fixing to read. Let me take it into my, my brain. Let me understand it. That way I can live it and maybe teach it and be an example to somebody else. Took me a long time. I actually, and I'll confess this to you, and I don't care. It may help you. When I'm reading the Bible, I see it. If it talks about Jesus walking down the street and when he touches someone, you know, their eyes or whatever, I see it in my mind and visualize it. That way it sticks with me, and I better understand exactly what it is is Jesus doing for people. Folks, he's still doing that today. You know why we ain't seeing it? We got our eyes closed. We got our eyes closed to the miracles that God has for us each and every day. These miracles still being performed. There's people still being blessed left and right here today. But we get so caught up in the busy world that we just ain't got time anymore for Jesus. Think about it. You know, and and it's like Cynthia was talking about getting a little head here. But, you know, there's so much meanness going on in our schools. Our children are going through so much, mamas and daddies and Nana's Papa, Mama and Papa, whatever you call. We just don't realize, you know, but we need to be close enough to our children and our grandchildren that they can come to us and say, I need to talk. I need to talk. This is going on in my life. I don't know how to overcome it. I don't know how to beat this situation. And folks, that's where we come in as adults. We need to be strong enough in the Lord to be able to tell them and lead them to Scripture to show them not just that it's our opinion, but what Jesus said, what God the Father said to handle these situations in their life. Give them that confidence to know Jesus is with them. Jesus is going to guide them. You know, even these little ones here, man, they they just so precious. They just bless my heart. You know, I got three granddaughters, and we like to play the guitar and let them sing and play around at the house, and that's just the biggest blessing right there. Hey, you know, it, it wouldn't matter if we was in a, a great big church filled with thousands of people. I wouldn't be more blessed than I was just a few of us in our living room doing these things. Folks, these children, they're the future of this church. People say they're the future. They're the future, yes, but they're the church now also. They need to be a part of it right now. You know, and I'm so blessed and so glad for the ones that's working with these children and teaching them these things. You know, and, and if you listen to the to the words of the songs and the drama, there's a message in each and every one of them. If you'll watch these children pouring out their heart and soul in, in their hand motions and their actions, you know, it's no different than a preacher getting up here flailing his arms and hollering and screaming at you. They're going up there and they're going through the motion and they're always, they're teaching us something, folks. Each and every one of us, the young and the old, they're teaching us something. We need, to, we need to learn this. We need to learn from them as much as they need to learn from us, folks. And I'll get into the scripture a little more here. It said, at the same time, came the disciples and Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a, a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Don't you think they were pretty shocked? These people were asking you, Lord, you know, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He was expecting them to call out some of the great prophets from the past and all that had done all these great things, you know, and maybe even wanted to talk about Moses a little bit or or, or Paul about, you know, the great things they done. But what did he do? He pulled a child, didn't he? Innocence. Innocence is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humbleness is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Folks, that's what we need to be practicing today. We need to, not, it's not about how big and mighty and strong we are, men, or how fancy we are, or whatever, and how much power can we, can we get here on this earth. Folks, it's about our eternal salvation. It's about what's going to be, you know, 
Brother John brought it out this morning. He talked about if you move the ocean one drop of water at a time. And then when he got done, start it again. That's eternity. You know, never heard of it put that way, but that's going to stick with me. Because, you know, folks, that's a long, long time. We just can't imagine what eternity is going to be, especially when it's going to be eternal peace, you know, for the ones that are saved and the ones that are born again and they got the blood applied, you know, and being forgiven of their sin. It's going to be eternal peace forevermore. But on the other hand, folks, if you don't receive Jesus Christ when that time comes, it's going to be eternal devastation, misery, suffering. I had a fella tell somebody one time, said, well, you know, ain't really nothing to be afraid of because your life's kind of like a piece of paper. When you set it on fire, it's just going to burn up and disintegrate and there ain't going to be nothing left anyway. It just all ends right there. You ain't got a thing in the world to worry about. That man's got a whole lot to worry about when judgment day comes. Folks, because the Bible plainly tells us, you know, yes, this body is going back to the dust of the earth. But this soul that lives inside of it, it's going to live forever somewhere. Whether it be heaven or whether it be hell, it's going to live some uh, eternally somewhere. The choice is ours this morning. The choice is yours individually. I can't save you. You know, the, your husband or wife or friend or neighbor or whatever around you, they can't save you. But boy, I tell you what, we can sure gather around you and we can pray with you and, 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 and pray to someone that can save you this morning. This morning, if you have that knock on your heart's door, don't wait to the invitation time. Come now. You know, you may be the key to the service. You may be the reason that someone else comes on to the altar just by your movement, by your obedience. That humbleness as these little children. Verse 3 says, And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's not about our power and authority here on this earth, is it? It's about our humility. It's about loving Jesus Christ. First and above and beyond anything, anything on this world. Folks, he's got to be first or he ain't there at all. And we as adults, we need to live that example in front of these children, you know. And not just the children here, you know, but children out there in the world. We need to let them know what a great and wonderful time it, uh, that they can have in church. It's not about just going and sitting down and you're going to get a, a switch in every time you blink your eye or move wrong just a little bit. You know, children can come to church. They can enjoy church. They can be a part of it because folks, once all of us older folks are gone, we don't teach these children the church is going to die out. And they're getting slimmer and slimmer already as they go. You know, we need to understand the importance of the humbleness, how we need to humble ourselves. And you think, think, be thinking this morning, well, you know, this message is just to the kids. Mm -mm. It's to the children, the children of God. I'm a child of God, folks. That's what you need to ask yourself this morning. Am I a child of God? If not, and if uh, your heart's beating out of your chest, well, you need to come pray. Right now's the time. Now is you need to make that, that the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life. That's going to last you for eternity. Folks, we need to do this now. If you're ready, if the Lord is talking to you, now's the time. Now's when you need to know whether I'm a child of God or I'm not a child of God. There should be no reason anybody leave this building this morning, you know, without that security of knowing I am a child of God. The blood has been applied and I'm going to heaven if the Lord was to come back tonight. Folks, we're not guaranteed we're going to come back this evening, you know. We've got a meal in the back. We're not guaranteed we're going to get back there to eat that. But you know what? As much as I like to eat, I'd rather go to heaven. I, I, I'm ready. I'm so ready. This whole world is so mean. It's violent. It's hateful. It's brutal. But like our Sunday school lesson said, folks, we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. It's fixing to get so bad. And it's just going to continue to get worse and worse and worse. 
Even while we're here, we're going to see a decline. We're going to see the meanness get worse. We're going to see good people start getting less and less that we see. You know, even good people are going to be afraid to stand down and say, hey, I'm a born-again child of God because they, they're afraid they're going to get shot. They're going to get uh, beat up or whatever. Fool, we cannot be afraid to talk about Jesus Christ. It don't matter where we're at, what we're doing, or what's going on. You know, them old boys I work with, they're some good guys. But you can tell by the life they live, they, they don't go to church. They're all the time talking about going to a little old bar up there in Double Springs called Gold Digger. Let's go to Gold Digger tonight and this and that. I'm just sitting there eating my sandwiches and stuff, just ignoring them. And one of them said, well, you know what? He said, you can go to Gold Diggers with us. He said, you can eat or whatever. He said, you might even get up and preach a little bit. I said, don't think I wouldn't. If the Lord told me to, if y'all convinced me to go eat there one night, the Lord got on me to preach. You don't think I'd get up on one of them tables or a chair or whatever and preach? I certainly would. And all of them just sort of sat back and they said, well, you know, it'd probably do us all a little good to hear it, wouldn't it? I said, it absolutely would. I said, since you brought it up, it certainly would. It wouldn't hurt none of you. I said, matter of fact, I said, I'd like to see every one of you in church on Sunday. It was about this quiet in that room. You know, so the Lord will show up when you least expect it. But you got to let him guide it. If I'd have jumped in there and told them all, well, y'all just, y'all are bound for hell. Y'all living a life of sin. Every one of them got mad. They'd probably beat me up and throw me out of that little shack we take lunch in. But the Lord took over. He done it the way he wanted to do it. And everything worked out. But that stuck with him. And I guarantee you, you know, one or two of them's done thought about it again. There's about eight of us in a little old, like a 10 or 12 room, and ain't none of us little boys. We're all this big. We just wonder if it's going to make it after every lunch. As much weight goes in there and then comes out every day. There's a little bitty room, big old boys, good boys, but they're lost, folks. I'm not judging them, but you're known by the fruits you bear. Folks, there's so many good people in this world that's going to face that most miserable time. They'll give you anything they got here. Give you the last bite of food. They'll give you all the extra clothing and shoes they have. They'll give you all the money they got. But the only thing they like is they ain't give their life to Jesus. They've not humbled their self down as these little children. As this scripture said this morning. That's what we got to be, folks. We got to be a humble people. We've got to love Jesus with everything we got. We've got to serve him to the fullest of our potential. No, ain't all of us preachers. Ain't all of us teachers. Ain't all of us musicians. Ain't all of us sing. But all of us has got something we can do for the Lord this morning. You know, and that's what we need to do. We need to ask the Lord, what is it that you'd have me to do? You know, it, it don't have to be something big and flashy and showy. What is it that you'd have me to do? Look at Jesus. He was humble. He didn't go in a big fancy array. He wouldn't carry it around with big horns and trumpets sounding everywhere he went. Jesus went humbly. He really didn't even want to be noticed. So many times when he'd hit them, he'd say, go and tell no one. Because it wasn't time, was it? Folks, there's a time and a place for everything. Right now, this morning, if the Lord's knocking on your heart, this is your time. This is your day right here this morning. This is where you need to receive the best thing that you could ever possibly receive. You know, it's Jesus Christ into your heart. We got to humble ourselves down as these children. You know, we need to come to these altars with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, as the Bible says, and he'll take care of all that. He'll mend that heart back together. He'll put love. He'll put uh, uh, prayers. He'll put understanding back in that heart. He'll seal that crack back up, make it whole again for you this morning. But you got to come. You've got to be obedient to him. Adults, these children got up here and give our heart and soul this morning. Huh. Some of us, and I've been guilty before in the past. Y'all can't get me to shut up now that I've started preaching. But in the past, I'd sit back here and just, I call it bobblehead Christians. They come in from the beginning of the service. That head goes to nodding. And, and you know, and at the end of it, when you say amen, I think somebody reaches up there and stops it. Because... We're just in agreement to everything the preachers say. But are we? We might be sitting there nodding. 
But are we acknowledging? Are we taking in? Are we receiving what God has for us? Well, I've been a Christian for 45 years. You know, I know what's going on. Do you? Do you know? Don't know everything. None of us know everything. Or we wouldn't have to be here this morning. None of us. You might be able to quote this Bible right here. From Genesis to Revelations to the very first verse to the last without even looking at it. But that don't mean you're going to heaven. Knowing it's one thing, living it's another. Coming to church is one thing. But even being a member of a church is one thing. But are you a part of the church? Jesus' church, not Hunter's Chapel Church. This building and this name on that sign out there won't get you to heaven, folks. Jesus Christ right here. It's that humility, that humble yourself down. You know, the Lord's not going to hold us very long this morning. If y'all got a song invitation, whoever wants to go ahead and be getting ready for that. Because I'm telling you, this morning, the Lord knows each and every one of your hearts this morning. He knows. And whether you want to confess it or not this morning, you know if you need to be in these altars this morning. I'm asking you to come forward. I'm going to ask everybody to stand while she's getting ready. Folks, this is not a shameful place to be at all. This right here is a place where you can receive the most precious and everlasting gift that you could ever get. So this morning, you go ahead when you're ready. As she sings, I'm going to ask you to come forward. You know, let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Let him guide you each and every day.
words of love so unconditional. I will have life eternal. everybody here you know and I think these kids need one more hand of applause <laughs> nobody forget we got food in the back uh, everybody's